the latest tech. I'm Alexa. I can answer your questions. Interviews. There will be several dozen shows trickling in over the months. Accessibility. We're, we're actually running a pilot scheme with the CNIB at the moment. This is Double Tap TV. Welcome to another edition of Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here for the ride. My name is Mark Aflalo. Soon, Stephen Scott will join us, but only after I remind you how to get in touch with us. So many ways to do that. On Twitter, it is at DoubleTapCanada. And if you use the hashtag AskDoubleTap, we will surely get to your questions, like one that we're going to bring up in just a couple seconds. And of course, the email address is feedback at DoubleTap.online. Thank you guys for all your emails. Stephen Scott, thank you so much for being here. As always, it wouldn't be the same without you, would it? Um, well, probably. Maybe, maybe better? I don't know. Come on, no need to self-degrade yourself. Uh, We're talking all about some really cool tech this week. Um, we got an email from a listener that said, what are those chunky black glasses that Steven is always wearing? And based on that email, I decided it was time to do a show about those Bose frames and talk about some other cool assistive tech. What do you have in your hand there before we even get to the frames? Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, the, the frames are one thing, but I am holding here the WeWalk Smart Cane that I'm going to tell you a bit about later. It's an innovative new design that uh, takes the white cane, the humble white cane that we all use uh, to navigate ourselves around, uh, it, it takes it to the smart level. It's, it's, it's so cool to see something like that, that really quite is archaic, really, in terms of when it was created, become smart. Same thing with those Bose frames that are on your face. You know, how often do you use your traditional white cane? And, and do you think that, you know, a transition to a smart cane is going to make your life easier? I'll be honest, I'm a bit nervous about smart canes. The one thing about a humble white cane, although it's a pretty dumb piece of kit when you think about it, it's just a stick, right? The thing about it is it gives you a lot of feedback. So as I walk along a street and I use mine everywhere I go, anytime I'm out, I have to use it uh, mainly so I can detect the edge of pavements, to detect obstacles in my path. And what that also does is it gives me a sense of what's on the ground. So obviously, if I'm going to walk across grass, I'm going to know I've hit grass before I actually walk onto the grass so I can keep on the path or, you know, fall off a pavement or whatever it is I'm doing. So these are really, really important things. Uh, that the really important information and feedback that you get from a white cane. Now, if you add smart technology to that, that gives you a whole range of new options. And this particular WeWalk cane gives you haptic feedback that tells you not only uh, what is coming up ahead of you, uh, but actually tells you above your chest height. For example, overhanging tree branches or um, you know, someone, a, a person walking up uh, in front of you will actually give you that haptic feedback that tells you someone is in front of you or you're about to hit your head on those overhanging branches. So really important feedback you get. But my question is, is it too much information? And actually, could that cause a problem? Does it actually detract? from the uh, the amount of information that you're getting already from the humble white cane. Well, for people who don't know what the traditional humble white cane really does at the end of the day, can you kind of walk us through what you're feeling for as you're navigating a road, for example? So as I'm walking along, uh, first of all, the white cane is about finding obstacles. You know, the difference between a white cane and a guide dog is a white cane will help you locate an obstacle uh, like a wheelie bin, for example, uh, whereas a guide dog will walk you around the obstacle. So some would argue that the guide dog in that case is better because obviously you want to avoid obstacles rather than having to navigate yourself around them. But that is what the white cane does. So the white cane will let you walk into the wheelie bin, assess it's a wheel bit, wheelie bin by yourself and then navigate yourself around it. Or maybe it's a parked car on a pavement or whatever it might be. Um, whereas with a smart cane, the idea is that you kind of get that middle ground, that hybrid ground, where you're not detecting the obstacle by hitting it, you're detecting it by feeling its presence coming up on you. So the wheelie bin is approaching, so you're starting to get a little bit of feedback and then a bit more feedback. And then as you reach the obstacle, you get a lot of intense feedback, a lot of haptic feedback that tells you there's something in front of you and you might want to navigate your way around it. And you use the sensor on the cane to essentially point yourself around the obstacle. So that's the difference between, say, all three, the, the white cane, the normal white cane, the smart cane and the guide dog. They all have very different functions, but the question is how good are they? 
So the Wee Walk cane doesn't actually touch the ground. There's no physical contact with the ground at all. It does. It is all no, it does. almost hands-free. No, oh, uh, no. Okay. so that's okay. what I'm holding So it's a combination hand. of both. Yeah, well, it is, yeah. So this, this although this I'm actually holding here is, is a handle of the, the, the cane, what you do is you take your regular white cane that I've got here and you just screw it on. So you just literally just plonk it on, you screw it in, and then all of a sudden you have a white cane uh, that has smart technology built in, and that's it, and off you go on the road. Uh, so the, the black handle or the blue handle or the pink handle of your regular white cane becomes the WeWalk handle, and uh, everything else carries on as before. So it's, it's really getting used to the earlier transmission of that haptic feedback, so it's actually giving you almost like an advanced early warning system for that cane. Yeah, so if you think about it, the simplest way to think about it is that the, the regular white cane gives you information on what's on the ground. But what the smart cane will do is it will give you information from what's on the ground, but also what's at chest level and what's above chest level. And you can adjust all that through a smartphone app as well. So it's pretty cool. It gives you a lot more information. My worry is, uh, does it give me too much information? And uh, we'll be talking about that in future episodes. But today we're going to focus in on how the device actually works. Not only that, but we want to find out how it came to be. And we're going to be talking to a couple of guys over at WeWalk. But first, let's take a quick break, Stephen. It is Double Tap TV. He is Stephen Scott. I am Mark Aflalo. Again, if you want to get involved, it's feedback at doubletap.online. And of course, our Twitter handle is at DoubleTapCanada. And use that hashtag, AskDoubleTap. We're going to take a quick break and come back and talk. Are these the founders of WeWalk, Stephen? That's right. Yeah, we're going to be talking to the founders and people behind the WeWalk Smart Cane. After we take a quick break here on Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash Double Tap. This is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here. As always, if you want to get involved, let me not stop reminding you. It is feedback at doubletap.online. Of course, that's our email address. And on Twitter, we are at Double Tap Canada with a hashtag Ask Double Tap. I am Marco Flalo and Stephen Scott. You are standing by with the founders and the creators of the WeWalk Cane, are you not? Well, Kershat and Jean-Marc, uh, really good to have you both here. Uh, first off, for those who are not aware of it, uh, can you tell us uh, what WeWalk is and uh, how it came about? Kershat, maybe you want to kick off. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kershat. I am co-founder of uh, WeWalk. I am blind from birth. As you know, technology has advanced so much. We all speak about how fast technology uh, is improving. As you know, according to World Health Organization, there are 253 million visually impaired people. And uh, although we speak about uh, uh, self-driving cars or how technology has advanced so much, uh, as a visually impaired person, I still use white cane, uh, you know, just a plain stick. Uh, and that's why we, we thought that we can build such a technology which includes all uh, smart city integrations and uh, latest technologies. Uh, and then uh, I don't need to hold my smartphone anymore. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, so, you know, you're talking there about fusing the smartphone and the, the long cane, the white cane that a lot of visually impaired people use. Uh, Jean-Marc, maybe explain to us a bit about how that is done and what the end result is for customers. Of course, I'd be happy to tell you. So as Kershat perfectly mentioned, um, you know, the white cane has been around for so long now, and it really is an exercise in simplicity, right? I mean, it tells you nothing more but what's on the ground directly in front of you. And with WeWalk, we, we wanted to continue that exercise in simplicity to bring together the best mobility tools, the best mobility features, if you will, uh, onto one sort of simple device that's a natural extension of what a visually impaired person use, uses, which is, you know, the, the standard white cane. So I actually have um, a WeWalk with me. It's almost like I've come prepared, um, but this is really quite simple. So what we've done is we've chopped off the rubber handle uh, or any standard grip that comes with the standard white cane, and we've replaced it with WeWalk. So what I'm holding right now is a handle-shaped device. It's got one end that screws on top of a standard cane, and then there's just a rubber sheath where you grip onto it as you walk around. And this handle has all the tech, so we're not changing anything fundamentally uh, with the white cane itself. Everything is, is up here. All the tech goodness is up on top which makes it very easy to switch out different canes and to get lengths which suit you best. 
Um, and up front, we have an ultrasonic sensor at the top of the WeWalk smart cane. Uh, this sends out ultrasonic signals, which then are bounced back, and WeWalk can then detect obstacles, and it warns you by vibrating, uh, you know, quite simple. But once you connect it to the WeWalk smartphone app, it, actually, it can actually do so much more because a lot of our services come from that connected experience, that smart city navigation voice assistant experience. Uh, so when you connect it and using the built-in touchpad, which is just above the ultrasonic sensor here on the WeWalk, um, you can actually access our custom built navigation interface, you know, with clock directions, with accessible directions, uh, and it's all read out through WeWalk or an earpiece if you have one attached. Uh, you can also use a touchpad to swipe around to find out about nearby bus stops, you know, get their timetables or even navigate to them. We even have an exploration feature. So as you're walking around with your WeWalk, you can find out about you know, places that you're walking past that you might not have known about before. And you can actually repeat that last instruction, that last place, uh, just by swiping on the touchpad. And essentially, by, by doing all of this, we've eliminated the need for you to have to pull out your phone, you know, to jump between different applications, which sure, they're really good at doing their specific purpose, but, you know, I'm visually impaired myself and, and, and jumping through uh, an app, which might not be perfectly tailored for voiceover or talk back, and then jumping to another one to find out about nearby places or, you know, or to use my voice assistant, it's a bit cumbersome. So by bringing it all together in WeWalk, you know, we hope to improve safety, to improve mobility, and ultimately to improve independence. And it's, it's constantly expanding. So WeWalk in itself isn't just a sort of tech device which you buy and it's, it's as it is. No, no, no. We update it constantly. You know, we've got uh, new navigation interfaces coming up. Uh, we've got a new voice assistant we're working on. And we've got some pretty exciting collaborations with some partners. Actually, I don't want to give away too much now, but we've got, we've got some exciting stuff in the pipeline for sure. And there are some really cool features in here as well, Kershat. I mean, one of the ones that I picked up on first off that I thought was kind of cute, kind of funny, and also then I thought actually really useful is the horn. It's got a horn built in. <laughs> yeah, yes, you know, even though we got some feedbacks from our users, hey, your horn sound is not like a real horn, you know, like a big truck horn. <laughs> so even though we got that kind of feedback. Yes, we have a uh, horn uh, because uh, uh, I, you know, we, we saw some visually impaired people uh, while they are walking on the street, and, you know, me as well. Um, just sometimes we find ourselves in a very crowded area and I want people to uh, let me go, uh, and then <laughs> we have horn and uh, users, uh, whenever they feel themselves uh, uh, uncomfortable in cr crowded area, they can press the horn. <laughs> I mean, and that's it. I mean, in some ways, some might see it as a bit of a gimmick, but actually, in a lot of ways, it's really, really useful as well. And it, it might be good for people who are low in confidence, who are nervous about speaking up, who may not realise what is in front of them or who is in front of them. But also, you're integrating Smart Assistant as well, so you can use Alexa on there if you wanted to, which is pretty cool. Jean Marc, how does that work? It's it's quite simple with how we trigger Alexa. So you're just walking around. You want to ask it, you know an alexa -y thing, if, if you will. Um, you just double tap the touchpad and you just talk to it. You're like, all right, um, what's the weather like? You know, should I, should I, should I get a raincoat? Um, you know, these, these sort of quick access to information that you would want to see in a tool that's accessible. And as Jean-Marc says, you can get access to the WeWalk app as well. It's available on iOS and Android phones. Get it from the respective Play Stores, Kershat. And Jean-Marc, thank you so much for your time today and best of luck with WeWalk. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. And also, just a quick one, um, and just a reminder even. So we've got our pre-order campaign for the WeWalk Special Edition. Um, it's got a slightly improved audio experience, a lighter and more durable enclosure. You should go definitely check it out. Um, and also the app as well. And to all our WeWalk users out there right now, thank you ever so much for you know believing us and being part of the WeWalk family. And we're so excited to, um, to roll out those new features. Take care. Thanks, Jean-Marc. Of course, that uh, website address is wewalk.io if you want to get more information on the WeWalk cane. But we are not done this week's episode of Double Tap TV. We're going to take a quick break and come back, and Stephen Scott and I will discuss what on earth he is wearing on his face. No, I'm not talking about makeup. I'm talking about the Bose frames. It is Double Tap TV. We are back in just a moment. Love Double Tap TV? Listen to AMI-audio for Double Tap Canada every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern for news and reviews on everything tech. This 
is Double Tap TV. We are back on Double Tap TV. Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you to the founders of WeWalk for uh, obviously talking to Stephen Scott. So nice for people to get on Skype with you. Was that a good Skype conversation? I, I know it feels like we should be doing these things face to face sometimes, Stephen, but I guess the new normal is these Zoom conversations, right? Hey, but yeah, it gets uh, more people on, I guess. It's, I'll tell you one thing, it's great and easy to get guests at the moment because everyone's at home, so it's perfect. Yeah, definitely. So so let's go back to the beginning of this episode where we talked about the email from one of our viewers that was asking about the frames and those glasses that are on your face. Obviously, you and I both know what they are, but let's recap and uh, reintroduce people to the Bose, the Bose frames as they are called now. Yeah, that's right. They started off life as the Bose AR frames, and that was because they had augmented reality built into them. Uh, and I would love to share all the wonderful stories about that. But unfortunately, I can't because Bose have stopped doing that part. Uh, they've cancelled the augmented reality program for Bose frames, but they're still selling these as Bose frames. They've kind of just dropped the AR part, which is fine. Uh, and, you know, they're great sunglasses, great, you know, and sold on the basis of being out and about, listening to music on the move, you know, being able to understand your environment around you, being safe whilst, you know, maybe walking along the beach, holding, you know, your lover's hand and all that lovely stuff. Uh, it, it's a really great piece of technology. And it does it by essentially firing the audio from your uh, head, from the arm of your uh, glasses here into your ear. So you're not actually having any audio uh, drilled in through bone conduction. It's being sort of fired into your ear, which of course does have an issue uh, if you have the audio too loud. And you know this only too well. You often heard my voice over speaking away merrily in the background. You've sometimes said to me, hey, I, I can hear exactly what's going on there, Stephen. So you've got to be conscious of that, uh, you know, especially yeah. if someone's maybe texting me saying, isn't Mark a terrible person? And I'm going, hang on, turn my volume down. Uh, but, you know. Thankfully, that's not happened. Uh, but, you know, that's, that's obviously a reality of it. It is firing the audio out into the open, but at the same time, it means when you're moving around, you're safe in public. Now, this begs the question about this technology in general and smart glasses kind of overall, because we're hearing a lot more about a potential AR glasses from Apple, and we saw the introduction of that LiDAR sensor on the most recent iPad Pro, the 2020 edition of the iPad Pro. Do you see a hybrid maybe coming out into play here where there's either bone conduction or firing speakers in conjunction with some kind of LiDAR sensor on the front of these glasses that may be able to take advantage of all this technology into something new? Yeah, and I thought Bose would be the first to come up with it since they were the first to come up with these AR glasses. But now they've cancelled the project. I don't know what that means. Is that is that because of coronavirus? Perhaps they've had to refocus their efforts uh, and not focus on, on AR because it's just been too much to bear and it hasn't had the success that they hoped it would have. I don't know. Uh, I don't imagine this will be an issue for a company like Apple, who are clearly already working on it. We know we've heard the rumours that you know some kind of AR headset will be coming out and they will be uh, you know quite small, quite neat glasses. They're not going to be big v virtual reality style VR style headsets. Uh, they'll look cool. Uh, they will have great functions to them and it will have all that additional augmented reality built in. And of course, that will be driven by a lot of that LiDAR sensor capability, not a camera. And I think that's a key point. It will not have a camera. A lot of us blind people hoped there would be a camera in these devices, but I think we've all kind of come to the agreement that Perhaps it's not a good idea to have a camera in smart glasses. Uh, privacy concerns, issues around, you know, personal privacy. And, you know, if you had kids at the beach and then someone's sitting there with a pair of glasses with a camera on, you'd be a bit freaked out, right? I mean, that would be a bit weird if you're yeah, down on the beach with your kids. That's just not right. So, you know, having a sensor on there does make a difference because you're not seeing uh, the world as it is, but you're seeing obstacles or you're seeing uh, potential, uh, you know, things in front of you that the sensor can pick up on that. Now, that can be really good news for us blind people. So that's not really where augmented reality comes into it, though, because augmented reality is a different thing. It's giving you uh, add additions on to the reality you already have or you know, giving you the access to a, another world through glasses. Bose did a fantastic job with this. It's just a shame they didn't continue. For example, you could have a beach scene where you could sit in your comfortable chair in the house perfect for during lockdown uh, you know you could sit there in your big comfy chair and you could imagine you were at the beach and you could turn your head to the right and you could hear the 
this, the, the waves roar and then you could turn your head to the left and hear the kids playing on the beach and then, you know, face front. And the whole world was moving around your head as it would naturally if you were sitting on that beach. So it puts you in that real world, although be it augmented. Uh, it is quite incredible what they can do with it. And I'm really keen to see what Apple do with theirs when it comes out. One of the best examples I could think of is when we're talking about using the Bose frames in conjunction with different apps that helped notify you about what was around you. Almost like that WeWalk cane that was doing it through haptic feedback, but being able to actually, you know, pair with a device like your phone, like the you know, Apple glasses will eventually, we assume, pair with your phone to be able to use that horsepower and the CPU that's there to let you know what's around you. And I think that if we, you know, this is why it kind of works well in this episode, because we talked about the functions of the capability of that WeWalk cane, and it really lends itself itself well to another piece of tech like a pair of glasses, does it not? Well, that's the thing. I mean, you know, ideally you would want something like this, the glasses, rather than something in your hand. You know, wouldn't it be amazing if the technology got to a stage where you didn't have to use a white cane at all? Because the glasses could give you all the information you needed. Now, I think we're way, way, way off that. And I don't think anyone would be suggesting that we're anywhere close to that or even to try it. But I think the idea the, the potential for this is huge. In 20 years, I think we're going to be seeing a very different world for blind people, especially uh, in the way that we navigate the world because of things like the LiDAR sensor, like AR. Uh, I, I think that kind of uh, technology is going to be great. I think in the meantime, though, uh, you know, if it avoids uh, or gives us the ability to avoid our X as we're walking down the street and we can sort of quickly cross the road and, you know, not have to engage, that's a good thing too. You know, it all works. It's all for the good. Yeah, definitely. Well, if you want to get your hands on the Bose frames, they're no longer called the Bose AR frames, you can head on over to Bose, of course, on Amazon and some other sites. You can find it there as well. And don't forget to head on over to WeWalk.io to check out that WeWalk cane. Steven, as always, thank you for being here. You guys at home, thank you guys for contributing. Email address is feedback at doubletap.online. And of course, on Twitter, we are at DoubleTap Canada. On behalf of Stephen Scott, I am Marco Flalo. Thank you guys again for being here. We will see you again next week here on Double Tap TV. For more great Double Tap TV content, visit ami.ca slash double tap. Hosted by Marco Flalo and Stephen Scott. Editing, Will Attar and Marco Flalo. Production assistants, Wendy Kaufman. Integrated described video specialist, Ron Rickford. Coordinating producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director of production, Kara Nye. Director of programming, Brian Perdue. VP content development and programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2020, Accessible Media, Inc.